There is an active jet stream across the northern United States right now, and over the course of the next week, that's not going to change. It's going to cause lots of issues, and I'll tell you all about them in this video. There's several rounds of severe storms on the way for many of the same areas that have been seeing them recently. I've got details on the entire pattern ahead, including Tropical Storm Barrel forming soon. That's up next. Thank you very much for joining me right here at One Nation Weather. As always, the model maps that I use to predict the weather throughout my videos are from Weather Bell. So if you want to check out their free trial link, it is right down there in the description. Also, for those of you who are new to my channel, I cover USA weather all across the lower 48 states, as well as tropical updates. So if you want more like that, that are just like this video in the future, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications right after you watch. Now let's get right into this here and take a look at the future radar for the next seven days and the pattern ahead here as we close out June and head towards July. We've got some showers and thunderstorms in the weekend ahead. Going towards our Saturday afternoon here, our June 29th of 2024, we're going to be looking at some showers and storms. Some of them lingering in from the morning here over parts of the Ohio Valley, moving into the Northeast. Some of them firing up with the daytime time heating, but all of it's happening along a front here that I just circled from parts of Maine back to Ohio and West Virginia. Some of these showers and storms will have the potential to be quite potent late on our Saturday in this region with damaging winds, some hail, even a few tornadoes being possible. I'll show you where that is in a little bit more of a breakdown a little later in the video. That's one area we're going to be watching with this front. You see some of those storms continuing over those areas even into our early Sunday morning, but also back towards the southwest along this front. You can see back towards the Ohio River Valley even all the way on over there into the central plains we're going to be watching some showers and thunderstorms it's a little bit uncertain where they're going to fire up but it looks like southern missouri and southern illinois could be a hot spot we could even have some over towards kansas and colorado so we'll definitely be watching that with some of the short range guidance once we get within 12 hours of this that's when we'll really only know exactly where some of those storms are most likely to fire up because there will be some gaps in between more than likely this euro model does a great job of showing that for those storms for our saturday night going into our early sunday now as we head towards the afternoon time of our sunday what you're seeing here is that we're going to have more storms along this boundary. This is that same cold front sinking southeastward. Notice it is at a pretty slow clip because it only moves from really Ohio to the southern part of Ohio and into West Virginia from Saturday going into Sunday here. South and along of that boundary, that's where we're going to be watching some of those showers and thunderstorms. So really from Maine and some areas of New Hampshire all the way back down and around towards parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, maybe even Texas. That's where we'll be watching the storms. The southeast and mid-Atlantic regions up to New York City, maybe parts of Connecticut and Rhode Island as well having the best chance for some isolated to scattered severe storms out of that. Again, I'll break a little bit more of that down later in the video. Once we get past this storm, it feels like the fourth one that looks just like it uh, over the course of the last week or two is going to be making its way into the north central U.S. Here we go towards our Monday, July 1st, kicking off the new month, looking for change, not seeing much here because we're seeing a very similar pattern taking hold coming out of Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado into some of those Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota areas there. This is where we're going to be watching new rounds of storms, some of those possibly severe coming out of Monday and into early Tuesday. Then as we go towards the end of our Tuesday, July 2nd and into our early Wednesday, July 3rd, with that low moving up eastward into Canada. Look at that. We're going to be watching another extension of some showers and storms from parts of Nebraska to the Midwest, even into some parts of the upper Great Lakes region, where again, some of these storms could become severe, and we'll hone in on exactly where those will be as we get a little bit closer in time to this particular event. It looks like that front, especially as far east as the low that's actually connected to it is expected to move, will probably be lingering around, and this could eventually impact a lot of that travel around Tuesday, Wednesday, going into the July 4th time frame, right? Uh, you can see from parts of Nebraska, Nebraska and Kansas all the way on over there to Ohio, looking like showers and thunderstorms certainly being a possibility. The GFS model shows some over a lot of the nation's midsection as well for Wednesday. Definitely going to be a lot to at least keep an eye on. Not necessarily a bunch of severe weather. There will be pockets, especially every afternoon into the evening and even the overnight where we'll have some of those summertime complexes, especially of these storms where tornadoes aren't necessarily the main concern. There will be concerns initially with those, but we're reaching that time of year when damaging winds become a big concern. And we could see more of those with some of these storms later on our July 4th, heading into the middle of the night, right when you'd be shooting off those fireworks into our early Friday, July 5th. Uh, it's very early to be looking at this because it is almost a week away from when I'm filming this video on your Friday evening on June 28th, but still a lot of storms for the central and some parts of the north, central, and eastern United States as well. So we'll be watching that, and the culprit behind all this is that jet stream I talked about. I started introducing this at the beginning of the video. What you notice is we've got this strong west-east flow along that polar jet stream here in the north, central United States on our Saturday, June 29th. So this is what's fueling that severe weather threat from Ohio and West Virginia up to Maine, especially especially here. But again, we'll have at least a little bit of a threat on the underside of this boundary back towards parts of Kansas, Oklahoma 
for our Saturday, late into the day, into the evening, as well as the overnight. It's the further southwest you go along that front, in most cases here for at least this particular event, the later the storms will be firing off. That front continues towards the east coast on Sunday with that associated mid-level jet stream energy. This is what we're looking at. This is 15 to 20,000 feet up in the atmosphere. We're using an ensemble collection here. So these are models that are averaged out because we've got several of them that actually make up this European ensemble system. What we're seeing here is that there's an average out of these ensembles indicating that we're going to have pretty potent mid to upper level winds here moving out of Nevada all the way on up there to the Dakotas uh, Monday. So out ahead of that, coming into those north central plains, coming out of the northern high plains as well, all these areas will be watching the severe weather throughout. That could even include, include some tornadoes up there in some of the plains spots. Definitely good for some of the chasers out there. And as we head towards Tuesday into Wednesday, this flow continues over the same spots. There's going to be locally enhanced areas of it that we come to notice as we get a little bit closer to each day of next week. So that's what we'll be watching from especially the Dakotas, maybe even Montana and Wyoming, the Front Range, all the way on over there to the Ohio Valley and Northeast, the far southern U.S., avoiding most severe weather chances for the next several days. Now, my OW severe scale, that's what I'm going to use to break down this weekend severe weather. I'm going to be using ones, twos, and threes. So one means low certainty, but a few severe storms appear possible. Possible. Two means isolated severe weather is expected, likely with a wind and hail driven risk. Uh, yellow three means that there's an increased risk for severe storms with all hazards being possible, according to my opinion. And as we head towards our Saturday, June 29th of 2024, you can see with that flow in the Great Lakes region, we're going to have that potential right out ahead of it into Ohio, northern West Virginia parts of Pennsylvania as well as New York, the western parts of Pennsylvania and New York specifically for severe weather. Pennsylvania looks like the bullseye state where most of the state as well as Ohio really will have that chance for severe storms as a cold front will spark areas of scattered severe weather Saturday and into Saturday night with the most notable area likely from Ohio to New York. Very moist unstable air will combine with a modest low level jet supporting storm clusters of damaging winds, hail and possibly tornadoes across the region. Other areas in those dark greens as well as the yellows especially need to be on alert, especially back there towards Missouri, where I think there could be another focused point of damaging winds. Let's play it out with the model here. This isn't going to be exactly correct, but you can definitely see that as we go towards the midday time frame of our Saturday, already looking at scattered showers and storms, some of these may be even severe in the yellow area there from Cleveland to western Pennsylvania. Uh, but definitely some showers and storms extending as far back towards the southwest as at least parts of Missouri here. Some of these early day showers and storms could prohibit some of the worst development later in the day, but it looks like with some of that low level jet stream energy with the moisture pumping up that I was just telling you about, from really here where I just drew the white line over to here, it looks like the HRRR model and the NAM model have been honing in. This will be an area we'll be watching for the worst severe storms. Notice we've got some clusters from Akron, Ohio, uh, up through Erie, PA, all the way on over there towards Scranton. Saturday could be one of those days where we're watching multiple rounds of clusters as well as some more isolated supercell type of storms here that will quickly form into a little bit more of those lines across this region. Definitely stay weather aware throughout the afternoon, especially if you're in Pennsylvania. I think that's where we could see multiple rounds of storms. Look at this. This won't necessarily be exactly what happens, but the HRRR model indicating we could see a broken, if not connected, line of very heavy showers and thunderstorms with especially damaging winds along it at this point, as well as isolated tornadoes and hail. By the time we head towards the late evening hours of our Saturday, again, hail's not going to be the main concern. Tornado's not really a big concern either, but if we get more isolated storms, that's where we'd actually see the tornado threat rise a bit. Those storms will continue breaking up. We could see a few even new ones behind it into our Saturday evening and night there over the Ohio Valley and Northeast region. But that threat overall is not what I have my attention on. Once we get to the middle of the night, Saturday night, heading into our early Sunday, it's this that I just circled really the western part of that marginal risk where we could see an additional upgrade from the Storm Prediction Center. They've already noted this. Again, I think in southern Missouri, that's where that could happen. Definitely looking at a damaging wind and maybe even hail or isolated tornado threat evolving there Saturday night going into early Sunday. Now, as we go into Sunday itself, we've got that front on the east coast, level 2 to level 3 of 7 on my own W severe scale from Georgia and the Carolinas up to Maine. I think the mid-Atlantic looks like the best overlap for ingredients for severe weather there, so keep that in mind even in towards parts of New York City on Sunday. Then uh, back towards parts of Montana, the Dakotas coming off the front range there, the Rockies and the northern high plains. That's another area we'll be watching severe weather. That could even have an MCS or mesoscale convective system associated with it. A much higher chance of that there where we could see some very damaging winds if the correct setup comes together. So we'll keep track on that. 
Going into Monday, this is my severe zones graphic. This shows where I think a level blank would be on my ONW severe scale. At the minimum, I think a level 2 of 7 is likely from the Dakotas down there towards Nebraska and Iowa. But also look at this, a level 3 of 7 for more scattered severe weather could be possible where I've got the orange highlight there. So the yellow highlight on my previous graphic would have been in that area of Nebraska for especially damaging winds Monday, if that makes sense as I kind of connect the severe scale with the severe zones. Going into Tuesday, looks like the Midwest specifically Iowa is a focus for severe storms and then going into Wednesday parts of Nebraska, southern Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kansas. And again, these aren't the only zones that will be seeing the severe chance, uh, but this is just where I think the highest confidence this early on is for isolated severe weather at that time. That's what we're tracking with that. Let's move on a little bit to the next four days of temperatures. Let's start with our Saturday, June 29th of 2024. So it's going to be a hot one across a lot of the south central United States. This is where some temperatures will definitely be above average in the coming days. It's the south central plains. We're not going to have any major heat waves except for in a more localized area of this part of the country where we're going to be seeing some of the triple digits mingling with some upper 90s and even Arkansas, Louisiana, and southern Missouri. We're also seeing some more slightly seasonable but still very hot to a little bit above average temperatures here in the southeast. Back on over towards the southwest United States as well on Saturday. But look at this. You see that circle there in northwest Wisconsin. We've got 60s and 70s low 70s at that across this region that I just circled, as well as in some parts of the northeastern United States. This is where temperatures could be so cool, especially there in northern Wisconsin where there's that circle that it's actually a minimum record high, as in the temperature has never been this low since records have been kept for a high temperature during the day. Now, as we go towards Sunday, we're going to have some near record maximum highs over there in parts of Montana, Wyoming, as the heat gets going ahead of some of those possible severe storms in that MCS. South of this boundary, we'll be watching 80s and 90s on Sunday. That's where some of the severe storms could also get going there, closer to the East Coast. North of it, more 60s and 70s into the north central regions, the Great Lakes. I mean, Detroit, Michigan, near 70 on Sunday. We're going to be near 70 in Chicago, uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, northern parts of Ohio as well. Look at this going into Monday, July 1st, kicking off the new month. You know, nothing too crazy or extremely abnormal for this time of year in the temperature department, but definitely a lot of heat climbing through the high plains in the western parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. We'll continue to watch that even as we go towards Tuesday. Some highs could break records if you see a box around them. Uh, but look at this, just some more heat, uh, even filling into some other areas of the nation's midsection going into the early part of next week. Keeping it even a little bit warmer now in parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota with some 80s there. But also look at this, some record-breaking heat could try and fill in in an excessive manner into some areas of California. So definitely a lot of little things to track with temperatures, just no major anomalies across a huge area. Let's talk about tropics, though, because we do have a little bit of an anomalous system. Because it's late June and we've already got some main development going on out there in the MDR of the Atlantic, the main development region. Living up to its name right now is the latest National Hurricane Center 7-day tropical outlook as of 5 p.m. On our June 28th here indicates we've got Invest 94L in the Bay of Campeche down there in the southwest gulf. Probably not going to develop at this point. There's also another area to watch now coming up behind Tropical Depression 2 there in parts of the main development region of the Atlantic. Speaking of which, Tropical Depression 2, did you notice I just threw that in? That is new, that has developed within a couple of hours of me filming this video just before. I actually have the first cone on the system right here displaying it for you in this video as of the 5 p.m. Eastern Time update on June 28, 2024. And you can see as we go over the next 24 to 36 hours after I film this video here, Let's just stop around 2 a.m. Sunday. We're likely to see a tropical storm form pretty much within six hours of me filming this, probably by the 11 p.m. update, if not into the early Saturday time frame. By Sunday in the early morning, we're seeing this be about 24 to 36 hours out from a directly hitting parts of especially the Windward Islands, the Lesser Antilles there. And this is likely to become a strong tropical storm by that point, or maybe even a low-end hurricane. The Hurricane Center itself is saying a strong tropical storm. Look at this, though. Hurricane impacts going out of the end of our Sunday into Monday here, really through a lot of Monday hurricane impacts, impacting the Windward Islands there with Cat 1 or Cat 2 strength being expected. Not a major hurricane, although that's possible, but definitely a strong Cat 1 or Cat 2 being possible over that area. Some of the Leeward Islands also getting impacted by this. Really, all the Lesser Antilles really on high alert. Then from there, we see that cone of uncertainty really broaden out. That's why it's called the cone of uncertainty, because the further you go out, the less certainty there is in the track. 
By the time we get towards Tuesday, somewhere south of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, not by much, then right over Jamaica, according to the cone, heading towards Wednesday afternoon. So that is something we really need to watch. And in terms of intensity, notice what we see here. Low to mid-grade tropical storm throughout Saturday, according to these models. That agrees with our National Hurricane Center cone. Once we get towards Sunday, you know, the model's still pretty close to each other. That's, these are all the lines of the models on screen. Around the middle of the day Sunday, that's when we could see a little bit of a shift towards a stronger tropical storm, maybe even a Cat 1 hurricane if the stronger models uh, actually went out with what they're showing at the scenario. Of course, we don't want to see that hit the Lesser Antilles, but certainly be prepared because as we go towards Monday, we could definitely see a Cat 1 or maybe even Cat 2 hurricane hitting those Windward Islands directly, hitting some of the Leeward Islands as well. Those Lesser Antilles really on high alert here. Going into Monday, that's when a lot of the direct impacts will occur. Going into Tuesday, we could see even more strengthening, especially if there's not many uh, direct hits to some of those islands. If the center doesn't go right over any of those smaller island features, we could definitely see this remain as a strong hurricane or maybe even a major hurricane. It, we'll have to see what happens from there, but definitely we'll be watching the impacts for the Western Caribbean heading towards the midweek and back half of the week next week. Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico be on high alert. Cuba, uh, even the U.S. Gulf Coast, you know, stay on a little bit of alert here. That's it for this video, though. I'll see you at some point this weekend or maybe even twice, depending on when I update. One nation weather.